It's finally here. I'm a couple days into using the new Pixel 7 Pro from Google. It's too early to call this experience a full review, but I certainly have some thoughts on this new phone. What do you get when the company who makes the Android operating system builds a phone around that software and does a pretty good job of keeping prices in check against the competition? We gotta chat some Pixel. And while you're checking out some fun new phones, make sure you give us a follow here and hit those subscribe options down below. And also give reviews.org a follow around the socials. Keep an eye out for some of those fun articles and contests coming your way soon. In a really funny way, the Pixel 7 only feels like the second true generation of Google built hardware. Google has sold a ton of phones over the years, but the Nexus line was always built by another manufacturer. Early Pixels followed that model, and it wasn't until Google bought part of the phone team from HTC that we saw more synergy in the hardware and software. This culminated last year with the Pixel 6, not only a phone built in-house, but also using a Google-designed chip. The Pixel 6 feels like the proper first-generation example of Google controlling the manufacturing experience a little more like Apple controls their hardware and software. The Pixel 7s are not radical departures from the Pixel 6s. If you have a Pixel 6, there are a precious few reasons to consider an upgrade. They're very similar feeling phones, and generally, for all phones currently on the market, almost no device truly earns a recommendation for a one-year upgrade anymore these days. The overall build is subtly tweaked, a lot worked on the Pixel 6, and that didn't need to change. The main difference people will see is the new visor on the rear cameras. This is a welcome upgrade over the all-glass panel on last year's phone. The Pixel 6 visor was a little less durable, and the panel had seams on the corner by the edges. The 7 improves on this assembly, and I think it looks better. Fun fact, if you have the 7 Pro and you hold the phone out at arm's length, you can kind of line up the telephoto circle with your reflection in the black glass of the phone, you keep that circled just under your nose, you can easily frame up your rear camera selfies. Just a little fun fact for you there, but I really do love this full width design, and the Pixel 7s are some of the only phones out this year that don't wobble all dumb when you place them down flat on a table. The next difference that you're more apt to feel, I like that the screen feels just a little less curved. I'm not a huge fan of curved glass on our displays, and this this seems just a slightly softer angle. I still think a screen protector and a case are basically mandatory on all expensive phones. So every little piece has been refined or tweaked from the Pixel 6. The screen is gorgeous, but in terms of color and HDR and contrast, it's pretty similar to the 6. The main difference is upgraded brightness, and it is better readable in direct sun. One of the biggest lifestyle upgrades, the fingerprint sensor is more reliable. Again, I'm not a huge fan of in-display optical fingerprint sensors, you know, the ones that shine a light through your finger, through the screen, but this is better than last year's phone. Google also adding face unlock to the mix this year will also be appreciated by many folks, just better in general to have multiple methods of unlocking a phone for different situations. The speakers continue to perform upper pack against similarly priced phones. <laughs> and the haptics are excellent. Get a nice pulse when you're typing, a precise feel and reaction, and it's integrated well into the UI, like getting a little dial click feel when you're scrolling through your apps in the multitasking view, or you also get a little pulse when your camera is level. Just a hallmark of pixel haptic integration. It's a really nice feel all around. The software situation is in much better shape at launch this year than last. The Pixel 6 arrived early days for Android 12, and it took a couple of updates to polish up that OS. Android 13 seems like a refining operating system year on top of a refining hardware year. There are a lot of little details better included, new features and widgets and assistant features, but Android 12 was the big step update Android 13 doesn't feel quite as ambitious, which also holds true for performance. This is a refined Tensor chip. The Tensor G2, or second generation Tensor, 
not a grand departure from the first chip last year. Definitely feeling a bit like a broken record player. We're in really early testing, but Google's claims aren't dramatic for the improvements to CPU power. In CPU bound tasks, it performs about the same. It's kind of neck and neck with a significantly cheaper phone, the Pixel 6a. What we'll have to watch for over a longer period of use is if we see those power efficiency claims bear fruit. The Pixel 6s are still powerful phones. I don't think people need more power as much as they probably want better battery life when they're trying to use that power. The noticeable upgrade for the Pixel 7s is GPU performance, where the Pixel 7 Pro is able to put out higher frame rates in many games, and it's a little better behaved while gaming. All phones are gonna run warm when you're trying to render console grade graphics, but the Pixel 7 Pro seems to hold on to better performance longer than the Pixel 6 could. Google has a track record of launching phones with conservative performance estimates, and then updating those phones later to add a little more horsepower. The Pixel 7 might find a little extra power later in its life, but at launch, it's already hilarious overkill for daily tasks. Premium tier phones really shine when you offload more laptop grade use and work that into short interactions. These days, I'm finishing off podcasts and editing family videos more from phones than I am from my proper computers and workstations because the cameras on this phone are really nice. From a hardware perspective, again, they're gonna be pretty similar to the Pixel 6. The main camera sensor on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, it was already one of the best camera sensors on the market, and Apple is only just catching up to it with their most expensive Pro phones. The telephoto, similarly, was also one of the best, not just for having a little extra reach, but it's a slightly larger sensor than what we see on Samsungs and iPhones, and it's brilliant indoors and in dimmer lighting. The weak spot on the Pixel 6 was the ultra-wide camera, and the Pixel 7 improves there with an autofocus sensor and the ability to close focus for macro shots. We're not going to see radical differences in photo processing. The hardware was already really good, but the experience has been made more consistent here. Google is taking better advantage of the pixels on each sensor for zooming and using software to improve processing. But the fun upgrade is 4K60 across all the sensors on the phone. It's been maddening to see how the iPhone can shoot generally the same camera quality across all of the sensors. And it's frustrating to shoot different frame rates and resolutions on different sensors on the same Android phone. All rear sensors and the selfie camera can shoot either 4K 60 or 4K 30 with improved HDR performance. Better still, this one's actually kind of special. The Pixel 7 Pro is one of the only phones that can switch between all three rear cameras in one video clip while shooting 4K 60. You don't have to stop recording, switch lenses, and start recording again. That's a very difficult compute task, but this is really appreciated, especially for how well it works. You shouldn't have to think about using your zoom in some situations and not in others. It makes the phone feel more like one super zoom lens. I nerd out on that so hard because it really does make the phone a little easier to use. Lastly, the battery situation is really early to discuss and it's always a trend in any modern phone that battery life improves when the phone gets a bit more familiar with your use and when to use low power modes or slower charging modes. A number of Pixel 7 owners are complaining about additional screen power draw and I think I belong to that camp. My daily use numbers are good but I was hoping for a bit more improvement over my Pixel 6 Pro. Again, the big claim for Tensor 2 is supposed to be focusing on improved battery. The new modem is focusing on reduced power draw. The insides of the phone are designed to help it run cooler. It makes sense to me that the brighter screen might be drawing more juice, and this could be one area we just need a little extra refinement. And that's always the gig when a new phone comes out. No gadget arrives finished. They all need varying amounts of updates and refinements. I've really enjoyed my time with the Pixel 6 Pro over the last year, even though it took a little while for the software to catch up. We should never 
finish our idea of a gadget in such an early launch state. The Pixel 7 Pro also needs a little polish, but it's starting in a much better position, and Google seems to be building on their progress from the 6, 6 Pro, and 6A. If you were holding out on an older Pixel, like a 4 or a 5, I think this is going to feel like a much more substantial upgrade. But if you're on a Pixel 6, my recommendation is a bit cooler, unless you're wanting to ride a good trade-in deal. The fingerprint sensor? That's a nice lifestyle perk. If that was bugging you on the 6, that might be worth the effort to exchange your phone, just that alone. The other consideration might be radio performance. Now, I haven't done a lot of location testing yet, but I am seeing some positive early results. If you've been struggling with reception on the 6, the 7 is also an upgrade there. And lastly, gamers. The Pixel 6 is a solid gaming machine. The 7 is just better. Outside those specific instances, I think the move from a 6 to a 7 is largely going to feel like a lateral move. Not so much an upgrade, just getting the newer phone in. Maybe that's all you need. Maybe emotionally that just feels good. But talking about purchasing recommendations, these are still very early days for the phone. We're just getting started on one of the most exciting gadgets of the year. And it's, it's reassuring to see Google polishing up a project, you know, making more of an ecosystem for their services. Pixels increasingly lead the way on new Google software. And this is becoming a brilliant platform to show off the bleeding edge of Google Apps. Are you sporting a Pixel? Are you looking to switch to a Pixel? Maybe doing some comparison shopping? Drop us some comments down below, especially as we are testing out a bit more of the Pixel ecosystem. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, and subscribing to the channel. For Reviews.org, I'm Juan Carlos Bagnell, aka Some Gadget Guy, and I will catch you all on the next video.